we want to construct a 3 by 3 non-zero coefficient matrix with integer entries so that the vector with components 2, 2, and negative 3 is a solution to the corresponding linear homogeneous system. Because we are constructing a 3 by 3 non-zero coefficient matrix, we know we have a system of three equations with three unknowns. And since the given vector is a solution, if we assume the x, y, z coordinate system, we know x equals 2, y equals 2, and z equals negative 3. Or more generally, we could assume x sub 1 equals 2, x sub 2 equals 2, and x sub 3 equals negative 3. But again, we will assume the x, y, z coordinate system. Next, a generalized form of a linear equation in three variables, which is the standard form of a plane in the Cartesian coordinate system, is ax plus by plus cz equals d. But we also know the system is homogeneous, and therefore d is equal to zero, which means all three equations are in the form ax plus by plus cz equals zero. Listing out all three equations for the system, let's use a sub one, a sub two, and a sub three for the coefficients of x, b sub one, b sub two, and b sub three for the coefficients of y, and c sub one, c sub two, and c sub three for the coefficients of z. So now that we know the form of the system, and we also know x equals two, y equals two, and z equals negative three is a solution, we will now substitute two for x, two for y, and negative three for z, and all three equations, which gives us the system shown here below. Notice now the only thing missing would be the coefficients of x, y, and z. And the coefficients are what we need to find in order to determine a possible coefficient matrix. And the only restriction is that we cannot use all zero coefficients. So if we take a look at the first equation, notice how if we let a sub one equal one and b sub one equal negative one, we would have two plus negative two, which is zero, and therefore we can then let c sub one equal zero. To show the work, if we let a sub one be one, we'd have one times two, plus if we let b sub one be negative one, we'd have negative one times two, and if we let c sub one be zero, we'd have plus zero times negative three. And notice how two plus negative two plus zero is zero. So these coefficients do satisfy the equation with the given solution two comma two comma negative three. And therefore one possibility for the first row in the coefficient matrix would be one, the coefficient of x, negative one, the coefficient of y, and zero, the coefficient of z. Again, our only restriction was we cannot use zeros for all three of the coefficients. So again, we have one, negative one, and zero. So to find the rows in the coefficient matrix, we simply determine the values of a, b, and c that would satisfy the equations. Another possibility would be to let a sub two be equal to three. That'd give us three times two. Then if we let c sub two be two, we'd have two times negative three, which is negative six. The sum would be zero, and therefore we could let b sub two be zero. So again, if we let a sub two be equal to three, we have three times two plus let b sub two be zero, giving us zero times two, and then plus let c sub two be positive two, which gives us two times negative three, and we have six plus zero plus negative six, which is zero. So a possibility for the second row in the coefficient matrix would be a coefficient of three for x, a coefficient of zero for y, and a coefficient of two for z. And of course, if we wanted to, we could put this two in parentheses, like we did all the other coefficients. Now for this last row or last equation, let's try not to let one of the coefficients be zero. Well, three times two is six, plus three times two is another six. We have a sum of 12. So if we let c sub three be four, we'd have four times negative three, which would be negative 12, giving a sum of zero. Again, if a sub three is three, we have three times two plus let b sub three also be three, giving us three times two again. Notice so far we have 12. So if we let c sub three be positive four, we'd have four times negative three. So we have six plus six plus negative 12, which is zero. So a possibility for the third row in the coefficient matrix would be three, 
three, four. Before we go, let's graph the three equations as well as the point two comma two comma negative three to make sure the point is on all three planes. Where for the first row, since the coefficient of x is one and the coefficient of y is negative one, we would have the equation x minus y equals zero. For the second row, the coefficient of x is three, the coefficient of z is two, giving us three x plus two z equals zero. And looking at the third row in the coefficient matrix, the corresponding equation would be three x plus three y plus four z equals zero. Let's go ahead and graph these three planes, again as well as the point two comma two comma negative three. I've already set this up to save some time. Notice how the point two comma two comma negative three is on all three planes and therefore it is a solution to the system. I hope you found this helpful.